Wheels. How are we doing? We're just wandering along over here at uh, Eastfield Depot and our job today is to attach this 170 that we can see in front of us to the 158 behind it. We'll use the 158 to do that and get them ready to come into service. And the 170 sounds like it's running. But the 158 will need a cold start. Now I'm making this uh, video particularly because on my stream last night I did actually try to couple up and I was not able to do it. And I just wanted to clear up that it's not the train. Okay, so this unit is definitely down. That's fine. So let's put our master key on. The way I can tell it's down, by the way, is it's got no brake pressure. So there's nothing in the uh, master reservoir. Now, weirdly, you can actually hear engines running. And I have given that feedback to our friends at Skyhook. Yes, I had to think which one it was. All right, press the start button until such time as that red engine stoplight goes off. There we go. And give it a moment. And hit compressor speed up. You can hear the engines picking up a few revs there. And we should see that the brake pressure is starting to come up. So both needles are starting to move. The main res is starting to pump up. And also the brake cylinder is starting to pump up. Because we are in full service or brake 3. Now let's just pop these over onto marker only more than good enough for what we're doing it'll take a little while to pump this up because it is a cold start in the meantime while that's happening let's just go and confirm what's happening <coughs> excuse me <laughs> what's happening with our little friend up front there open up so let's just jump into this cab and what have we got in here? So this one's running, its master reservoir's charged, its brakes are in step four, which is what you would expect. Yeah, it looks like that is in, it is, it's in the emergency, so that's fine. Okay, so we will know shortly whether we can uh, control this unit. Let's not tempt fate, let's close the door. Let's come back to our 158. It should be charging up by now. If it hasn't, we'll just have a quick look around inside, because why not? Oh, it's nearly there. It's about halfway. One thing we didn't cover in the uh, stream, actually, is when you want to set this thing up as a gangway. So you come back here and step back a little bit, because it flips. There you go. Now it's a gangway ready to go into another unit that might be there that's not a 170 because of course all you could do is plant your face on the windscreen and go Wah. but we got that over with shut that how is she going inside we're up to four bar there's a fair chance the brakes would actually release if i did release them now so uh we'll wait a little while though because we want that to get up to about six so we're nearly there this is the joys of cold starting. Turn the GSMR on, even though it doesn't do terribly much. Oh, another thing I didn't manage to find in the stream, there actually is a switch for the fan. It's up above the fan. Thank you, Adam. So I had some uh, advice from Adam from Skyhook and William, who's one of the people involved in... I don't know if I want to reveal what he's involved in, actually. I was just thinking, let's just say he's a beta person and leave it at that. And uh, he did suggest that because I was not in neutral, we were not able to couple. So let's go into forwards because this train does look like it's ready to move. You can hear, already hear the compressor speed up has been overridden by putting it in forward. I should have turned that off first. DRA to off so we can move. Brakes are coming off. Now we want to gently kiss the 170 in front of us. So you don't need a lot of speed on. You want just a tiny little bit. 
because this is meant to be a gentle activity. And you would normally stop short and then you would get directed from outside because you probably wouldn't be doing this as a driver only operation although on some railways you do. Everywhere I've seen in the UK there's a cluster of people And we should be about to couple. We have. Now, if I go back into neutral and press the couple button, you can see the other train just did a little jig. So we're in brake step one. So let's go into two and three for our own brake test. Release. Now you can hear air moving around. Good. So let's go into brake one again so we don't roll. And we'll just pop out, trying to get smacked in the face with the door. I just have not had enough to drink today. That's quite clear. Let's pop back up into this unit. Now that looks like the brakes are still on, as far as it's concerned. Now the 170 is a bit of a weird one, because it doesn't like free roam very much, which is essentially what we're doing. So, let's not take that as an indication of whether it's going to work or not. Yeah. So the, the 170 is a rivet product and the 158 is a skyhook product. Well, in real life they talk to each other. And we know if you put them together in Formation Designer, they work. Alright, so in theory we are coupled up. So let's release the brakes again. And let's go into reverse and let's just try and move this train because this is what we couldn't do i can tell we're all we're going to be able to because we're already rolling now so it has indeed released the brakes in the whole train and i can actually feel that the other one's powering because that took off significantly faster than one of these does i don't actually know how much track i've got behind me so i didn't want to go too far then let's go into forwards and try and push it the other way Yeah, that seems quite promising. Okay, again, I don't know how much truck I've got, so let's just stop that there. Uh, let's shut this one down now. So this one would be lights to off and bring you to off and off. So that's this cab is now shut down. Let's go down to the other end of this one because what I'd like to make sure of is we can drive from the other end. And then we're going to do the same thing from 170 and make sure we can drive from that. Because you wouldn't want to get halfway through a trip and discover that you couldn't drive, would you? Alright, so we didn't have much track to play with. That's okay. Let's go into forwards. And just go into marker lights again. Release the brakes. Okay. Oops, you know what I didn't do? DRA. And I didn't turn it on at the other end either. I should have done that. Alright, so we can definitely drive from this one. Let's put that into full service. Do what we didn't do at the other end and turn on the DRA. Put our lights to tail lights because they're going to be on the back. And put you back into off off the train simulation doesn't actually care whether you put it in DRA or not when you shut down the cab but it is the correct practice so you should so we'll do that before we go and leap into the 170 and make sure we can drive from in there so let's plonk on the DRA the reason you plonk on the DRA is by default you are protected let's hop out of here Close that up. Let's wander up to the front of this 170 and see if we can drive this one. All right. Let's jump in the chair. And master switch is down there. First to 
neutral to start with. And let's bring our brakes back to one. That would appear to be releasing. Uh, headlights on this one are up here somewhere, so we'll turn our tail lights off. We should have turned them off in the intermediate unit as well. Day running, okay, that should be pretty much it. All right, let's release the brakes and try and drive. See what happens. Actually, it would help if I was in forwards. It's very hard to hit forwards in this with the rail driver. It's revving up and we're moving. Could have switched against us there. We'd probably just trail through it, but you know. Who wants to take the chance? So we'll stop before we get on it. All right. So that seems to work remarkably well. Cold starting the uh, 158 and coupling up to the 170 does pretty much everything I would expect it to do. So the only thing that misbehaved a little bit was the brake gauge in the other end of the 170. And that's hardly a skyhook issue. That's something that Rivet's going to have to address. And I do note when you come in here and activate your cab, the gauges do actually work properly. So it's, it's possible they just don't behave when the cab's not active. So had we activated the one at the other end, probably would have worked. Alrighty, well, that's it for today. So just recapping, we came down to it's Eastfield, isn't it? Eastfield Depot. And we cold started a 158, attached it to a 170, and we're able to drive from both ends of the consist. So proving that coupling actually works. All right, there you go. Now you know how to do it, both of those things. So all good. Have a good day, enjoy yourselves, I hope this was helpful, and if you've got any questions, chuck them in the comments down below, and please like and subscribe. See you later. Bye now. Bye. We played a game.